Now it's, let's kill the babies right up until the moment they're born and some even after that period of time. We've become more and more callous with our respect for life. And as we've become more callous with our respect for life in the universe, we've also become more callous with respect to our dealing with each other. Joining us now, Dr. Ben Carson, the former director of the Johns Hopkins Pediatric Neurosurgery Center and author of the upcoming book, Created Equal, The Painful Past, Confusing Present, and Hopeful Future of Race in America. I should add, he's the former Secretary of Health and Human Services as well. Dr. Carson, really appreciate your joining us today. Very glad to be with you. Thanks for having me. Democrats think they have a winning issue in the midterms now with the abortion rights issue, the leaking of, of this draft uh, copy of uh, an opinion regarding the Mississippi abortion law. Do they have a winning issue? Uh, it really depends on, on how those who are pro-life handle it. Uh, I think they need to make sure that people understand what this is actually about and not let it be distorted. What we're really talking about is taking an issue as important as life and putting it back in the hands of the people and the elected officials as opposed to a bunch of unelected judges. And that's exactly how our system was designed. Well, that's not what they're going to present it as. We're already hearing overstatements uh, and distortions that this is an outlawing of abortion nationwide. You know how the game is Which played. Which, of course, it is not. Right. It, it does not outlaw abortion at all. It just returns the decision-making to the state level where it should be. It acknowledges, perhaps, that uh, the courts usurped the position of the people and the legislators back in 1973, and perhaps uh, they recognize that and want to return things to the normal. I, I suppose the Democrats' best hope would be along the lines of what happened in the state of Virginia in, in the late 1980s when L. Douglas Wilder won the governorship in that state on a, on a pro-choice platform. He won, obviously, all Democrats in the state primarily, uh, but a lot of independents as well. But so much has changed since that time, both politically and scientifically, and you're uniquely positioned as a pediatric neurosurgeon to look at some of the changes that have happened in, in your utero care uh, and in the treatment of, of preemies, et cetera, et cetera. What kind of changes have we actually seen? How has the science advanced the pro-life cause? Well, we've reached a point now where babies uh, can be saved to a born prematurely uh, at 22 weeks. Really? And there have been some saved even earlier than that. What, what is the size? Uh, Let me also, interrupt you. Let me interrupt you. How, how big is a baby at 22 weeks? Uh, about a pound. It's not very big at all. Uh, but, you know, our ability to take care of those babies has increased dramatically. There's no question about that. And as time goes on, it, that number will continue to go down. Uh, but that's not even the issue. The issue is... You have a male gamete and a female gamete. They join together. They form a zygote. That thing starts growing immediately. And within a matter of six weeks, it's got a heartbeat. It's got a little face, arms and legs. It's very hard to say that that's not a human being. Have you actually seen an abortion performed? I have. And it's a, it's a heart-rending thing to watch. You see the little baby, the human form, and you see the tube introduced and frequently the baby seems to try to move away from it before it rips off one of the arms and the legs and you see the blood going down the tube. It is just horrendous to watch something like that happen. It's hard to imagine how we can do it. And how has the political landscape changed either in the favor of the pro-life movement or pro-choice movement? Well, it's changed tremendously. Uh, you remember uh, you know, in those days, people were saying abortion should be rare and uh, only for very limited purposes. The Democrats were saying that. Everybody was saying that. Now it's, let's kill the babies right up until the moment they're born and some even after that period of time. We've become more and more callous with our respect for life. And as we've become more callous with our respect for life in the universe, we've also become more callous with respect to our 
dealing with each other. And that's a very sad commentary. I want to talk to you uh, briefly about uh, the, the politics of all this as well. A lot of people, a lot of pundits on the left have begun to write off Donald Trump, your former boss, uh, on the uh, political scales as, as the de facto leader of the Republican Party. The, the vote uh, results in Ohio and elsewhere. I think Trump endorsed candidates went 55 to nothing uh, in these primary elections suggests that Donald Trump is not at all finished nor is his agenda. Uh, he's alive and well, but uh, the hatred for him is also alive and well. And you got to remember that this is a guy who is an outsider. He absolutely refused to play the games of the insiders in Washington, both Democrats and Republicans, and that's why they hate him so much. Mm -hmm. And they need to get rid of him. And they need to silence him. And it's not happening, and it's irritating them significantly. Well, how powerful is the hatred factor, and how does that, how does that play into votes in the midterms? Uh, I think it's going to play a big role. Uh, there are a tremendous number of people in our country who just are observant. And they say, when we had certain policies, we were doing well. And when another group came in who had opposite policies, we're doing poorly. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out what's going on here. And people are seeing that, and they're going to vote accordingly. And there's going to be a lot of attention this time around on how that voting is done. Would Donald Trump serve uh, the electorate and the Republican electorate better by stepping back or taking a more active role? Well, I think, uh, you know, the good Lord sets up leaders and takes down leaders. Uh, at times that he proposes. I've told that to Donald Trump himself. And uh, I think we just have to wait and see. Uh, what we do need is some logic, some common sense, some courage, and a true love for the people of this country in our leadership positions, not just a love for a political party. Well, we're still a long ways out from those midterm elections. So much can happen. The world can change overnight, as, as we well know. Uh, we'll be watching. Uh, we'd love to have you back to examine some of these issues when we come back uh, at some point in the future. Please join us. It'll be fun. Thanks a lot for having me. Dr. Ben Carson, thank you so much.